and let's talk about digitization according to the installation of CCTV cameras. Danny, you'd have to pull that up for me. Installation of CCTV cameras. The government says they have so far installed 10,000 CCTV cameras, correct? That's what the, the government says. But first, take a look at Vice President Dr. Baumia telling us how all the, the districts in the country will benefit from CCTV cameras. Take a look. Now, on that occasion, he had mentioned that we're going to have CCTV cameras all over. It's becoming quite difficult technically to pull up the video, but we're pulling it up now shortly. It's become, a, a, it will be the main thing for the country in terms of fighting off criminals, warding off criminals like has been done elsewhere. Take a listen to Vice President Dr. Baumia. Which will involve the deployment of 8,700 CCTV cameras in all 216 districts with three command centers in Accra, Kumasi, and Tamale. Cadet officers, ladies and gentlemen, it is in everybody's interest that the police retains, the police service retains the project which will involve the deployment of 8,700 CCTV cameras in all 216 districts, with three command centers in Accra, Kumasi, and... That was the Vice President of the Republic. Now, I'll tell you the premise upon which he made that promise. But look again at the speech he made yesterday, how is digitization addressing public security and safety, which has been critical to most of us. Now, he says, paragraph 103 says, in many advanced countries, the pervasiveness of CCTV cameras imposes some restraint. Okay? The per pervasiveness of CCTV cameras. Where is it? Let me pull it up. Uh, Danny, please pull it up for me. The per pervasiveness of CCTV cameras in many places, many advanced countries, imposes some restraint on potential criminals. You are likely to be caught if you break the law. That is why we have installed 10,000 uh, CCTV cameras since 2017. The cameras have helped the police to solve a number of crimes, such as the arrest of suspects in the recent bullion van robbery. I need to remind you that that bullion van robbery that happened at Adedenko, a police had occasion to go and ask for a private person to supply them CCTV footage, even though we had installed CCTV footage. I know that the police have been using that to arrest people. Recently, somebody uh, drove unnecessarily and in a hazardous way and was picked up. So it's a good initiative. But I'm saying that this is what the vice president said. And it says at the beginning of 2017, we only had 800 CCTV cameras in operation, which is a fair point to make. Now, why did the vice president make that promise? The vice president made that promise uh, on this occasion because police officers had been killed. You remember um, Chief Inspector Ashilevi at the Kwabenya police station. Chief Inspector Ashilevi had been killed at the Kwabenya police station. Now, a background story to that is that he had gone to the station on, on duty. He had gone to do some monitoring and supervision. On that particular occasion, the bandits had ambushed him and shot him in the buttocks. They had then freed seven of their own who were in jail at the Kwabenya police station. It was then at the funeral that the vice president of the republic had made a promise that all police stations in this country were going to have CCTV cameras. Nobody held a gun to the vice president's head. The vice president of the republic, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who yesterday gave us a very beautiful speech on digitization, said that as part of that drive and to improve safety and security, like you saw in paragraph 103, says that all police stations in this country, including Kwabenya, including Ahanta, including Kaneshi, including Mamprobi Odoko, including Binduri, all police stations in this country will have CCTV cameras. That was the promise that was made. Now listen to it. This is it. Vice President Baumia had on this occasion, I don't know why the screen, screen is fighting me this morning, but the vice president had mentioned that all police stations in this country was going to have uh, CCTV cameras. Take a look at the video from the funeral of Chief Inspector Shilevi, who was posthumously promoted to the rank of ASP by the President of the Republic. The President, Nanado Danko Akufuado, 
through the police council has instructed that Chief Inspector Emmanuel Kweku Aslevi be posthumously promoted to the rank of Assistant Superintendent of Police. He died fighting for the people of Ghana and he must not be forgotten. We will do everything to preserve his memory and we will do everything to resource the police service uh, to fight these types of criminals. On behalf of the President, Nanado Dankwa Kufuado, we extend our condolences to the family. May the soul of Assistant Pro Superintendent of Police, Emmanuel Kweku Aslevi, rest in perfect peace. Now, that was Vice President Baumia at the uh, funeral of the late ASP, whose family are still languishing in pain. And for many officers who are also worried that that promise of having CCTV cameras in every single police station has not happened. Guess what? Subsequently, then Deputy Minister for Interior, who is now a Greater Regional Minister and MP for Ayahuasca Central, Henry Korte, had gone to that police station he had said the matter was under an, an investigation. He didn't want to get into it, but he made a commitment and a pledge on behalf of the President of the Republic and the Minister for Interior, who is still our Minister for Interior, the Honorable Lawyer Ambrose Derry, that the government was working so hard to make sure that they provide the police with all the logistics, which includes, which includes body cam, and I'll tell you where that body cam thing comes from, body cam, body armor, and uh, firearms and tasers and all of that. But first, listen to Mr. Henry Quarty, who is a deputy minister in charge of interior. Uh, the matter is under investigation, so I will not go into it. But I assure you, again, that uh, Mr. President and my minister is working very hard, and that uh, some of the challenges that are facing the Ghana police, which was captured in our manifesto, uh, is on its way, and we are working very hard to ensure that the police are provided with logistics to be able to combat crime without fear or favor. There are a lot of crimes that the Ghana police and the stakeholders have fought, but uh, uh, some of them are still under investigation. And you agree with me that we cannot come out openly to say we're doing A, B, C, and D. Indeed, if I give you the statistics of crime, it has gone down. Yes, we do not dispute the fact that uh, in the recent, in the past, or the few weeks ago, we've been met with one event or the other. And as I told you, again, I want to reassure the good people of this country on behalf of my minister and Mr. President that the stakeholders are working very hard. We are resourcing the Ghana police with the, the logistics to be able to combat crime. And this we shall do without fear or favor. Honorable Henry Corte there, he was the Deputy Minister for uh, Interior now, he's the Regional Minister, so he's still bossu within, within the scheme of things. On that occasion, the logistics that he spoke about, which had earlier been announced in Parliament by the President in the State of the Nation Address, unfortunately we couldn't find the video, the President had mentioned that we're getting helicopters, we're also getting drones, which is connected to the digitization, digitalization agenda. Drones for the Ghana Police Service. Recently, we have seen horses and dogs. Question is, where are the drones bought or procured for the Ghana uh, uh, Police Service? And this was in 2019, by the way. The video you watched was in 2019, where they had been told that we are working so hard to make sure that the police will have body cam. Every police station will have CCTV cameras after the gruesome murder of uh, Chief Inspector Ashilevi. Uh, you remember that the vice president had made a statement at the funeral of uh, a, a, a police officer called Awal or so in the Ashanti region. On that occasion, the vice president was there. Guess with who? I'll show you shortly. The vice president on that particular occasion was there with a crack team. Now, a current IGP was there, but he was not the IGP at the funeral of the slain police officer Awal. He was also there with Simon Osei Mensa, who is the Ashanti regional minister, and the boss of the Security Council in the Ashanti region. 
That's the vice president standing next to him. Of course, we couldn't capture him towards his right. Is the Honorable Abubakar Sadiq, who is a man who was in charge of our uh, Zongo ministry at some time. So you can clearly see the crack team that was there at that look occasion. Now, let me blow your mind. Yesterday, the, uh, the, minister was in, the Minister for National Security was in Parliament. But before that, the IGP at the time had also indicated that, oh, whatever the vice president has said would, is possible and can be done. Now, this is the IGP, Asante Apietu, who is on retirement now. Of course, he got extra contract after he had retired. He said, traditionally, MTTD officers are not armed, but the recent developments have shown that all police officers performing frontline duties, such as the MTTD officers, will require some form of protection of themselves so they can perform their duties. And these are uh, the areas we are looking at. Like the minister directed the IGP, this is an area we need to look at so that the protection of our officers can be enhanced. What it means is that IGP will have to sit down with the police management board, uh, the director general in charge of motor trans traffic unit, and look at the modalities in there. We are certain that we'll be able to provide logistics. ACP David De Clou, he had uh, Kwesi for his job at the time. Now, he had said that whatever had been told, uh, told us by the uh, vice president and subsequently confirmed by the IGP is possible. This is the reason. This is the reason, and thanks to Ghana Web, this is the reason they decided that we're going to arm our policemen, MTTD officers, and also give them body cam and also give them body armor and helmets. Tell me the last time you saw an MTTD officers wearing their white and their black or blue black with side arm, mm, with body cam, with uh, body armor, and also with their helmet. Tell me, it was a promise that was made. And you know, in advanced countries, when you have a body cam, you have your helmets and those cameras and the lights, it transmits information in real time. On a digitized uh, pathway in real time, in real time, so that crime can be kept. Again, they were promised to have walkie talkies. Check how many of our MTTD officers, according to the digitization plan, have walkie talkies. This was the reason. Now, play for me the Minister for National Security in Parliament talking about why all these promises have not been able to come to pass. Play for me. His Excellency, the Vice President Dr. Mohamed Bukawumia, in February 2018, announced plans by government to fix CCTV cameras in all police stations across the country. A plan that is integral to the rollout of this phase of the project. Currently, Mr. Speaker, the police have some 900 police stations in total operational uh, areas across the country. And this phase two project is providing CCTV coverage for all 432 regional, divisional, and district police stations out of the 900. To enable monitoring of these installations, and the remaining stations, Mr. Speaker, would be covered in subsequent phases of the project. The rollout is currently ongoing, and if I can repeat, all 432 stations will be completed before close of the year. Mr. Speaker, even as brisk efforts are being made to complete the existing phase the relevant planning works are also being carried out to pursue additional phased deployments of cameras to cover the outstanding areas that cannot be seen. The Honorable Kandapa in Parliament, not so long ago, as yesterday or so, he had blamed it on COVID. Now, can you imagine the number of things that have been blamed on COVID-19? When it suits government, COVID-19 is not blamed. When it suits government, we don't blame COVID-19. But this morning, there's a police officer who is going to work. And since 2018, he's been promised that CCTV cameras will be present in his police station to ensure his protection so that he doesn't die a, a useless death. Forgive my French, like ASP 
uh, late ASP Ashilevi. This morning, there's a policeman who is going to work, knowing full well that I have been promised body camera and, 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 and lights and gota and everything else and sidearm, but he doesn't have them. Can we blame that on COVID too? And I know that some of you will say, oh, these are security matters. When you fix CCTV cameras, like we fix them after the minister is giving us updates, it is a security matter, but it's a matter of public knowledge. When I enter a police station and there's CCTV camera, I will know. When I see an MTTD officer with body cam and has helmet and has body armor and has side arm, I will know. So let us be complete in our digitization story and admit what we have not been able to do because, like the vice president said, we will get there. We are not there yet. But it is also important that we track the promises that we made and then we stick by the promises that we make. If we like cherry picking too much in this country. We like cherry picking too much in this country. That's Mr. Ambrose Derry. It's a civilian's own gun. So how uh, is our army MTTD cops a threat? Because some CSOs had raised questions. We are in 2021. This happened in 2019. 2020, 2021. Will we blame that on COVID too? Good morning.